This is the Media Mark Weather Show. Well, we don't have any photos or videos to show you from viewers sent in, but if you want to send in a photo or uh, a video for that matter of weather or nature, uh, send it in on my Facebook page, like me at Media Mark. And don't forget to uh, either email it to me at mediamark.com at gmail.com. That's where you can send in all your nice photos or videos, even on my Facebook page at Media Mark. That's the best way, but if you want to email them, that's my email. So let's take a look at what we've got going on across the nation. As far as precipitation amounts, Precipitation will be mainly confined here across the plains in the southwest and of course here in the east here where we have that uh, frontal boundary that's going to move through the weekend here. Uh, but we're not looking at any way major uh, in the concerns of precipitation wise. Let's take a look at uh, precipitation wise for uh, the weekend. If we take a look at uh, where the fronts are going to be oriented this weekend, we have that front that's going to sweep through across the east coast here. It looks like it's not going to really get hung up. It's the pattern is going to remain very progressive. So very open wave pattern here as it moves east and pretty much weakens at this point. Uh, nice high pressure system building out west here. So not much to speak of at the moment. When we take a look at those temperatures. We head our way into uh, Sunday and Monday here. This is the coldest air of the season heading down across much of the plains here where we have the temperatures dropping down to the teens, some single digits for highs and even some 20s and lots of 30s here for the Great Lakes. And that'll eventually be transferring eastward. A lot of those temperature wise, uh, the, those really cold Arctic temperatures and overnight lows will be getting way down there. So that's what we're looking at for temperatures. You can see we're heading towards a deep freeze for much of the US and Canada. And for that matter, let's take a look at the snowfall cover across much of North America. Look at this. Canada, we're looking mostly snow at the moment. Most of Canada is covered in snow and it's up here in the Yukon territories that we're seeing those temperatures for highs in the minus 50 to minus 60 below. Those will be even getting colder during the next couple weeks and that will transfer some uh, as the jet stream plows southward across the northern part of the United States over the next week or two. Some of those temperatures will be breaking off and heading southeastward. Now it's not going to be quite that cold across the United States as the air will modify. But as I said, that is a great connection of cold air snowpack that will be heading our way. Let's take a look at what the Euro versus the GFS. Things have gotten even more complicated with this system. And let me show you exactly why. I'm going to take it in two segments here. Let's take the GFS, which I'm kind of leaning towards, but uh, I'm kind of having a hard time with some of the positioning of the highs with the G GFS. GFS takes the system across the Gulf Coast states, just east of New Orleans, up towards Pensacola, and eventually up towards the Carolinas, where this is where the models differ. The GFS takes it further out to sea and pretty much skips the Mid-Atlantic and New England and keeps most of the snow and most of it will be rain over at this time over the Mid-Atlantic and some snowfall over portions of the Southern Appalachians could not be ruled out at this point because both models indicate that there could be some snowfall over the Southern Appalachian. So Western North Carolina, Western Virginia, what, Southern West Virginia, portions of Eastern Tennessee, portions of no, extreme North Eastern Georgia, uh, Western South Carolina. These areas could eventually see some snowfall possible. Now let's take a look at the Euro. Euro starts here in the Gulf of Mexico, just the same spot around the GFS. This is where both of the models agree. Springs the storm system up into the Carolinas. Now the Euro it, on this uh, Thursday afternoon is starting to hug the coast. In fact, the Euro takes the system just a jaunt inland, a car, pr pretty much tracking it up the I-95 corridor. This is a big change from the last couple of uh, the last several runs for that matter of the Euro, bringing it in uh, inland across the I-95 corridor. And that will, if that happens, uh, significant snowfall accumulations could be expected Thanksgiving Day and Black Friday across portions of the Mid-Atlantic, uh, New England and most of the Northeast for that matter, and portions of Southeastern Canada. So this has to be watched. At this point, I'm kind of leading towards a blend of the models. Let me show you what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking right here. I think the low pressure will form just south of New Orleans here and head up along the Carolina coast and eventually move just near the Norfolk area and then kind of skim off the coast a little bit and uh, produce some light snows here across portions of the uh, Northeast Corridor from the Poconos, Catskills, portions of the I-95 area, and then heading up towards Boston where it will be a rain and snow mixture for them. 
it's really hard to get into snowfall accumulations at this point. It's still far out. So I'm going to leave it at that, and I will continue to update you on this developing situation. It really is a battle of the models, the GFS versus the ECMWF being the Euro. And like I said, the placement of the GFS high is much further east than the placement of the Euro high. And that will completely have implications in where this system heads. That's going to do it here at MediaMark. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at MediaMark. Subscribe to me on YouTube at MediaMark.com. Here's a five-day outlook for my hometown viewers in the Susquehanna region of New York. Susquehanna region of Northeast Pennsylvania. Look at these numbers here. We're starting off high on Friday here, heading on into Saturday. That's when the cold front comes through Friday night. Rain will change to snow showers during the morning hours of Saturday. Now we're not looking for a big accumulation, but some of those ridge tops could see upwards of an inch of snow, especially on those grassy surfaces. Heading on into Sunday, look at this. Sunday is the worst day for cold. Look at that. We might not even make it to 20 in many areas. Sunday night, single digits. We head on into Tuesday, Wednesday. Look at this. We start to moderate just a little, but don't get used to it because Thanksgiving Day, another cold front, a shot is in advance of that developing possible coastal low, which I'll have more details on later on. That's going to do it here at Meteor Mark. <music>